Hold on. Let me give you a quick, well, probably a little bit longer than a quick overview of a scope that I've got relatively recently. An old Tektronics 465 oscilloscope. 100 megahertz oscilloscope stuff. When I got it, it was a relatively basket case, so to speak. Pretty high end scope, pretty decent scope when it was made. About years haven't been too easy on it. And one of the main problems with this unit was the fact that the fan in the back of the unit had quit working while it was in use, or while it was being used, and there was a lot of heat damage to the internal components, not including the fact that the trace rotation ring, which sets in on the back side of the CRT, had got knocked loose evidently when the scope had been dropped at some point in its life, so the trace rotation ring was bouncing around loose inside course had to take that all apart and get that fixed and replace the fan on it and let's see here show you real quickly so if you can see here all I did was just mount standard computer style fan on the back to replace the run internally which had failed because trying to get a replacement would have been a lot more time than it's worth with how all the other damage had been done inside. I'll take the cover off and let you see inside. Here is the shot of the fan area that caused all the problems to begin with. Of course the little fan impeller would have stuck on the end of that motor shaft and then in this area here providing the ventilation for the unit that the fan motor itself had locked up and after looking through all the stuff I'd have to disturb to remove that fan motor I thought it'd just be best to leave it in place disconnect it and wire up a standard iron PC fan on the back which fit relatively nicely to provide the fresh air and in this case this one never failed it'd be a lot easier to get to than that sucker and as I said the failure of that fan caused a lot of damage to other internal parts in the unit and there's the vertical amplifier board along with the, the range select trim capacitors and everything else and they like using fiberglass shafts back to controls located further down on the unit Tektronics of course likes using a lot of socketed transistors and key points like here here and the like while a lot of the other transistors are normally soldered in. And of course they like this titanium caps that cause so much problems. If these ever start going on this unit, then it's probably gonna be near the end of the oscilloscope because those things there's a lot of them on here and when they reach the point of the first one goes then the rest of them not far behind. Of course there's the delay line here. Delay line which for the vertical amplifier section which is coiled up underneath the CRT the trace rotation ring is located in here you gotta literally pull the, uh, the CRT out to get to it 
while the Transformers, which are so hard to come by, sent back there. Luckily, there's no damage to the Transformer. But the rest of the power supply section is another deal. One of the first things that is obvious is one of the capacitors which normally inhabited this spot is completely dead, completely open, so Tarkin removed it and replaced it with a normal, modern, uh, computer grade capacitor stuck in there. But of course, the PC board uses the metal can of the capacitors to complete ground connections between parts of the board so when I put that in then I had to take and jump her over between the ground connections on the capac old capacitor holes there to complete all the circuits that is needed. You'll see that when I flip it over. And of course there's the There's the horizontal board stuff. Luckily, all those ICs and everything are in good working order. And I haven't had any problems with that board at all. Well, range selection board and stuff seems to be all in working order. Stuff, I flip it over to the bottom. Here is the bottom of the oscilloscope with various controls like the focus astigmatism and dial light controls and stuff, and other various functions through here. Problem that caused me the most consternation with the scope. Was the power supply, which you're looking at right there. As I said, the fan had quit working, and this part got way too hot for its own good. And after I'd got the fan, after I'd got the scope, and got the fan replaced, one of the things that went out first was U1554, which is part of the voltage regulator circuit which you can see right zoom in on it right there that little dastardly bugger it was originally uh, 7404 let's see here an MC1458 or whatever but didn't have any of those on hand. It's a dual op amp. I replaced it with an any. You can probably see it right there. Any 5532. When I replaced it, yeah, you can see it right there. Any 5532. It seems to behave perfectly fine. That location failure of that chip really took me a little bit to figure out what was going on because the positive su supply which wasn't even related to the supply that this one operates was acting like the output was shorted but, but the problem was the output of this had shorted positive which was causing the transistor it's connected to this one yeah, I think, I forget which one it is, it's been a while, but then the other transistor came at full saturation. It was pulling down the output of a totally unrelated supply, so that one caused me a little bit of consternation. And the other problems that had been caused by it was, as I said, the failure of one of the capacitors which 
you can see where I had to jump across the ground leads where I had removed the original can capacitor and put in place a computer grade one and one of the rectifiers had completely died and I was worried about how much current was going across it so I put in a quite a bit more substantial unit and used jumper wires to go to where the old one used to be and that way I know this one here isn't going to have a problem with the rectifier failing from a too much current or too much heat and here you can see where I'd tapped into the internal supply to run the computer fan out out on the back side here which is coming out via this wire and the other bridge rectifier is fine while one of the other individual diodes had failed and had to replace it. Luckily though, none of the main series regulator transistors had failed, which was lucky on my part. And you can see on the other stuff here for the trace illumination and other stuff and the transistors that supply the dial light and everything for the illumination light bottom side of the main power transformer of course with 120 240 volt selector so pretty much a complete overview uh, the trouble I've had with this unit right now seems to be behaving itself pretty good. As I said, it's a standard dual trace and 100 megahertz scope. Ooh, do, do. Close up view. Electronics brand four sixty five. So take care, take it easy.